Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about the Aimpoint Acro P2, and this is quite possibly one of the most robust red dots that I have ever had an opportunity to get my hands on. I have to say a huge thank you to my buddy Hefe for allowing me to borrow this and bring you guys this review. I've had it for a few weeks. I've ran it through a two gun competition. I have had it out to the range to shoot and uh, without his help, I probably wouldn't have been able to make this video happen. So thank you for that. Before we get any further into the video, I gotta ask you guys a question. What is your favorite red dot? Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below. Do you also prefer open emitters like the RMR or closed emitters like the Acro? Let me know as well because I'm starting to become more of a fan of closed emitters and there's a couple of reasons why and hopefully I'll get to those reasons in this video. If not, we're going to be doing a number of comparison videos not only with closed emitters, I already have a Holosun 509T. We've talked about it a little bit on the channel before, but now we have the Acro. I'm going to look at the Steiner and the Swamp Fox closed emitters as well. So hopefully over the next couple of months, we'll have an opportunity to look at all the different closed emitter um, optics that are out on the market today. At least the big hitters, you know, Swamp Fox, Hollow Sun, Aimpoint, and Steiner. And then kind of look at reasons why you might want to choose a closed emitter over an open emitter or vice versa. So stay tuned for all of that. In addition to that, I want to ask you also, are you guys signed up for the Fit and Fire newsletter? If you're not, I encourage you guys to swing on by fitandfire.com and sign up for that. I've got a lot of great deals on ammo prices as we're starting to see Prices tick down a little bit. I'm trying to get that out to you guys every single week to include a number of great deals on firearms, firearms accessories, and training as well. A lot of the sites that I have for training, I've already worked with those instructors in the past and uh, they're people that I would recommend. Classes all across the United States. Hopefully it can be someplace close to you guys. Swing on by, sign up for that, and don't forget we have a giveaway every single month, so sign up for that as well. Okay, let's get back into this and talk about the Acro P2. Like I said, this is going to be the newer version, so it's going to have some updates to this particular red dot. One of those updates is going to be here on the side. Instead of having the controls on one side and the battery on the other, they're going to have both of the controls and batteries co-located on the same side. And they have improved the battery to a 2032 instead of the 1620 or whatever it is, the smaller uh, watch battery. They're gonna have the more, uh, I would say, accessible 2032 battery, which is going to prolong the battery life as well. So we're talking about 50,000 hours worth of uh, battery life on this. And that is a, that's an improvement from the P1. Now, realistically, should you ever need to um, run your battery completely out of juice, I would say no, and that's something that I would encourage you guys to consider setting up a reminder on your calendar at the beginning of each year to swap out the batteries on your red dots. Uh, that's something that I do. I swap out the battery on my key fob for my truck. I swap out the batteries on my red dots for pistols and rifles. Anything that takes one of those types of batteries to include like my garage door opener, I change them all out right at the beginning of the year. A lot of people might say, well, that's a little bit of a waste of battery and I can understand that. Maybe your finances don't allow you to do that and you kind of got to stretch it a little bit longer. But at the very least, I know I have the confidence that none of my uh, key fobs or red dots or anything like that are going to fail me throughout the year unless they end up breaking or something like that. So food for thought. The controls here are really nice. They seem like they're recessed, but they're actually not. And I really do like how uh, audible and tactile they are. If you listen here, hopefully you guys can hear that. There is a pretty loud click and you can feel that click as well as you increase or decrease the brightness on this red dot. This is going to have six daylight modes and four NVG modes as well, or night vision modes. And to be frankly honest with you, um, 
it's a, it's a little excessive. On its highest setting in a room like this in the studio, it's extremely bright. And then during the day, it's really bright as well. If you guys are interested in a kind of torture test of this, you know, with a 500 round burn down and dropping it and, um, you know, beating up against a barrier and stuff like that, I encourage you guys to swing on by and check out Sage Dynamics. With that being said, like I mentioned, I have put it through a two gun match and then had it out the range as well. It, and it had no problem at all. You know, it, it hasn't slowed the slide down and that's one of the biggest complaints of the quote unquote tactical mailbox. Um, with this being on top of here, a lot of people think that the size is going to add a lot of weight to your slide, slowing it down and causing failures to feeds or failures to eject. I didn't have any issues with that. It only weighs 2.1 ounces, so that is not going to be that big of a deal for most of your polymer frame striker fire pistols. One of the things is drawing and finding this red dot is not an issue whatsoever. As I draw, I'm able to find it almost every single time and it's exactly where I want it every single time I present my firearm on target. So that's an added bonus as well. The biggest concern with closed emitter red dots is going to be the mounting solution. So this is going to be an area that is a lot different from say RMRs or um, you know some of the other open emitter red dots that are on the market today. Instead of this being bolted directly onto the slide, it clamps on kind of like a 1913 Picatinny section. So you're either going to have to have your slide milled specifically for this red dot or you're going to have to get an adapter plate. We are running the CNH Precision adapter plate on here and let me tell you, it is rock solid. I've had no issues with it. It doesn't seem as if this is moving around at all. The accuracy on target is exactly where I expect it to be each and every single time I pull the trigger. As long I'm, as I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. So uh, that combination between the aim point and the CNH Precision plate has been rock solid. So I really do like that as well. One of the other great things about closed emitters, especially with this one, is as you draw and bring your firearm up, this is going to give you kind of a tunnel effect, uh, which is going to allow you to kind of get that red dot on target a little bit faster. At least that's what I've experienced as well. Now let's talk about some of the issues that I've seen with this, and it comes in twofold. Number one is, they're extremely hard to find on the interwebs if you're looking for one to purchase. And if you do find one, they're going to be pretty pricey. We should expect a premium price from an aim point optic, but we're also talking roughly about $600, give or take, when and where you buy this particular red dot currently on the market. And that's a lot of money for people. When in comparison, you can buy, say, a Holosun 509T for a couple hundred dollars less. Uh, the Swamp Fox is another budget option as well. Uh, so you're, you're going to end up spending a lot of money when it comes to this particular uh, red dot. However, it's an aim point. You should expect good customer service. You should expect quality components with this, and you should expect it to run for a lifetime. I mean, it should really have no problems um, over the next five, 10, 15 years. It should be uh, like a top running all the time. The next thing with this is because it is so much larger than most other red dots on the market today, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to conceal. I have concealed carry this uh, a couple of days, not all the time, but a couple of days out of the week, I'll have this with me just to kind of test out not only this, but a new holster I just got done reviewing as well. It matched up with this pretty well. And um, it, I did find that there is obviously a lot more surface area to try to conceal rather than a RMR or even a Holosun 507 or something like that. So those are two of the biggest issues when it comes to this type of optic. Finally, one of the last things that I will say about this is that this is going to have quality components. And you can see that in the glass. Usually you're going to have some type of bluing or tinting effect to the glass because of how an LED emitted red dot works. It's going to reflect off the glass and that tint helps reflect 
that red dot back to your eye in a particular manner. This does not have a lot of blue tint. It's ever so slight, but it is far better than obviously the more budget options. So that's number one. Number two is because of the higher quality glass, you're not going to have as much parallax in this optic as well. There is some ever so slightly, but as you pull this up and you start twisting this back and forth, you're not going to see too much uh, distortion in the image as you do with other brands out on the market as well. So that really kind of sums up my thoughts on the Acro. Uh, obviously, like I said, I'm gonna start doing some comparison between it and the other closed emitter red dots on the market today. So be sure you guys subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss those videos as well. But again, I asked you guys, what's your favorite red dot? Do you like closed emitter versus open emitters? Sound off in the comment section down below. Is the P2 one that you guys would like to get your hands on or are there other options that not only you are looking for but you would like for me to check out as well? Maybe do some comparisons. That would be awesome to hear your guys' opinions. Naturally, let me know in the comment section and we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much. And sure you guys are checking things out over on the Fit and Fire newsletter and uh, check out some of these videos at the end of this video in case you guys have missed out on some things. I really do appreciate all the support. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye y'all.